Hey, welcome inside another edition of Tin Chat. In case you're new here, this is the part of the show where we talk all things Fort Wayne Tin Caps baseball. Normally, I'm accompanied by the man, the myth, the legend, Mike Maz. But listen, man, even the biggest superstars in sports, i.e. LeBron James, same category, they need some rest every now and then. We got to keep Mike fresh for the summer, so we gave him the night off. He'll be back better than ever next week. As for this week, got a special guest joining the show. If you've followed the team at all this year, you know that no one on the Tin Caps roster has impressed more than Ethan Elliott. Earlier this week, Elliott named the High A Central Pitcher of the Month. Through five starts, the lanky lefty leads the league in strikeouts while sporting an ERA under two. Our conversation begins with Ethan's explanation as to what has made him so effective early on this season. Fastball command is is so key um, in any you know level you're at. Um, it plays so well. So if you have fastball command, then they have to worry about that, and then they also have to worry about secondary pitches as well. So it's kind of a dangerous combo um, when you're able to you know spot up a fastball anywhere you want, and then have your secondaries to play off of that. Um, so that's just where I've been really comfortable with, you know, just keep pounding the zone and, and, and good things will happen. What are you sitting at velo wise with your fastball right now? And have you seen an uptick in that this season after hitting the weight room, uh, during the 2020 off season? Uh, I'm sitting 88, 91 ish. Um, not really an uptick in, in velo, but it's more consistent. Um, I noticed like later in the games, fifth inning, uh, sixth inning that, you know, I'm still at you know, that 88, 89 range. Whereas before I would, you know, throughout the game, I would slowly decrease um, and then end the game at like 85, 86. So it's like just having the endurance and, and just strength to, to keep up the velocity. I think it's, it's helped me a lot. Nobody's going to get blown away, I guess, by, by an 89, 90 mile an hour fastball. You know, you get, you got guys that are throwing 97, 98, 99 at this level, but, but, You've been able to obviously be so effective uh, with the stuff that you have. To me, that that seems like like something that you know maybe is good for kids who are coming up in this game to see to see a guy who maybe doesn't throw ninety eight, ninety nine, a hundred who can still be really effective at the professional level. Is that something that you take pride in, just being a guy who not necessarily blows you away with this with his fastball velocity, but can can still find a way to get guys out and be effective? I mean, I think it's I think it's key. Uh, I, I've never thrown hard in my entire life. Uh, the only thing I had for me was command and, and the ability to throw strikes and make guys get themselves out. Um, so I never really had that. Hey, this guy's got velo. You know, he's going to blow you away. I never had that. So it really taught me, um, you know, how to pitch to guys because, you know, fastball, like you said, fastball. A slower fastball might not get guys out, but if you know where to place it and opportunities and what time to place it, then you can be really effective. It doesn't matter how hard you throw. I mean, you could throw 75, and if you you know your command is there, you, you can get anybody out. I mean, it's just uh, just one of those things that I'm happy that you know it kind of happened to me because it taught me how to pitch and taught me how to really be able to locate, um, especially in, in scenarios that you know, fastball could be effective. One of the things that I think is cool about baseball is um, not every guy went to, you know, a, a powerhouse college, like you, not like in basketball, you know, half the league went to Kentucky and Duke and all that stuff in football, you know, with Alabama. And, but in baseball, you see so many guys who come from smaller schools and you're obviously a, a perfect example. Lincoln Memorial uh, is, I believe you, where you went to college, correct me if I'm wrong. Number one, how did you end up there? And, and what was the recruiting process like for you that ultimately led you to Lincoln Memorial? Yeah. So at a high school, I, you know, 79, 81, um, didn't throw very hard. Didn't have, didn't have the D one power that guys were looking for. And, you know, Lincoln Memorial was, was there and, and they were like, Hey, you can be a major part in our program. Um, and that, that's definitely where I wanted to go. To be able to play freshman is, is something that, you know, not a lot of guys can do. Um, but, you know, I was just like, if I go there, I can, you know, get stronger, gain weight, and, and just learn a lot. Um, so I'm definitely thankful for the opportunity they gave me. So born and raised in Knoxville, correct? Correct. 
So I'm guessing grew up a pretty big uh, Tennessee Volunteers fan. That was, yep. So uh, what uh, what else is because obviously like when we hear Knoxville, uh, that's the first thing you think of as as an outsider is is Tennessee and the Vols. Um, what else was what else is, was life like growing up in uh, in Knoxville? And I guess kind of describe your your upbringing in sports. Was baseball uh, the the only sport for you, or did you, did you play other stuff growing up? Uh, growing up, I, I pretty much played every sport except for football. I just didn't have the size for that. Um, but yeah, you know, soccer, basketball, you name it, I was playing it. Um, I was really big into outdoors and, and just getting outside and playing with friends. So um, yeah, we had the double the A affiliate for the Cubs is, is 45 minutes away. Um, so went to tons of those games. My dad's been a season ticket holder um, for Tennessee baseball for I don't even know how many years now. Um, so yeah, growing up, it was all baseball. My brother played. Um, and so, yeah, it's just pretty much all I've known. And, and that's why I fell in love with it. Obviously this is your first full professional season of baseball and, uh, being in Fort Wayne, I guess, talk to me about your experience in the city so far. And, um, you know, obviously you've had a month now to kind of settle in and, and get used to your surroundings a little bit. Yeah. I mean, this place, it, we've heard about it in spring training before COVID and everything like this is the place you want to play at. Um, and, and it's, it's amazing. I mean, I know we haven't had the sold out crowds or, or even close to max capacity yet, but uh, I mean, the fans are, are great. The, I mean, the ballpark is, is just incredible. Um, uh, I just can't say enough about it. Yeah. Do you ever, do you ever pinch yourself at all? Like you, you, when you walk out on the mound at Parkview field and you see like, not obviously not every, not every minor league ballpark is, is as nice as this one. So especially to go out there on opening day, uh, the first uh, first game in, you know, 600 and some days for the organization and, and to go out there and obviously it wasn't a packed house, but uh, to, to, to look out and, and see that where you were pitching and see the surroundings. I mean, did you ever kind of have one of those pinch yourself moments while you're out there? I'm going to be honest. I think I pinch myself more than anybody, uh, you know, just having the opportunity because a lot of guys don't, you know, it, it's kind of a, a, a surreal feeling to just go out there every day because you never know when it's going to be your last time. Um, so my mindset is always, you know, this could be the last time I ever step on a mound. Um, so might as well, you know, make the most out of it. And, you know, we got a great, great group of guys, um, have a great time in the clubhouse. And then these fans are great. So hey, there's really nothing you can complain about. I mean, it's just, it's just a great time. Well, the, the way you've been pitching, you might not be in Fort Wayne much longer. You might be getting a call here soon. Uh, Last one for you on that note, as obviously you continue to, to try to work your way up the ladder and, and hopefully you'll get a call soon up to double A. Um, what is, I guess, objective number one for you as far as continuing to develop your game to ultimately get to where you want to get to in San Diego? I think it's just working every day. I, you just can't, you can't just say, Hey, you know, I don't feel great today. This is going to be my relaxed day. I, I think it's just, you know, having the opportunity to go out here and play every day, you just got to, you know, keep working, keep getting stronger, um, and then just give them a reason, you know, to, to bring you up, I think. Um, just showing what you got every day and just being yourself. That's all you can do.